First, an emergency siren that barely allowed time to react. Then, fire raining from the skies and coordinated attacks of the entire Second World War. The offensive on Pearl Harbor was as surprising as it was lethal. December 7th went down in American history as one of the darkest days, with a total of 2,403 dead and thousands injured many of whom were completely incapacitated to continue their military careers. But beyond the political effects and the role this attack played in the development of World War II, there is a rather dark story hidden beneath the waters of the Pacific. What exactly happened to the bodies of the deceased American sailors? For decades, the ocean waters were the grave for hundreds of unidentified soldiers, but technological advances now allow us to recover their stories even from the smallest remains. In this new installment of military history, we want to take you to Honolulu to explore all the aftermath of that attack, including the brutal revelation carried out by American soldiers in the Pacific Theater. December 7, 1941, was just another Sunday at the Pearl Harbor Naval Base, located in the idyllic waters of Hawaii. However, that beauty was interrupted by horror and death shortly before 8 in the morning when Japan executed one of the most effective surprise attacks in history. A total of 353 aircraft from the Imperial Japanese Air Force flew over the base, unloading thousands of kilograms of explosives on the harbor and the anchored ships. The Japanese ships took off from six aircraft carriers and attacked in two waves, damaging 18 American ships at Pearl Harbor four of which ended up sinking. The Japanese attack was incredibly violent and destructive, as can be seen in this shocking footage. In total, the attack lasted just over 90 minutes, but for the young people present in Honolulu, it could well have lasted an eternity. Within hours of the offensive against the naval base, Japan declared war on the United States and the British Empire, although after such a military action, that declaration was merely a bureaucratic requirement. The fire of World War II had reached Washington, and a new chapter in the most brutal conflict ever seen was unfolding. But as the United States prepared to enter the largest conflict in history, Positioning itself as the Allies' surprise card, they first had to deal with the disaster in Honolulu. Destroyed ships, contaminated waters, and thousands of human remains scattered in the Pacific waters. The scene, as you can see in this footage captured days after the attack, was truly infernal. The surprise nature of the Japanese attack caused human losses to be even higher, severely complicating the recovery of bodies. The first person in charge of finding survivors and the deceased was Captain Homer N. Wallen, who had the help of military personnel from across the country, as well as civilian contractors who provided their boats to recover both the deceased and usable war material. While the sunken ships were impossible to recover, it was possible to partially repair some of the damaged vessels. But the scars of this offensive go beyond twisted metal or the bodily injuries of the survivors. There were injuries that took decades to heal, related to the identification of the sailors buried at the bottom of the ocean. When a ship sinks, it takes with it a large part of the lives it carries inside, collapsing completely and becoming the metallic tomb of thousands of people. The recovery process of a large ship is not only expensive, but also long and complex. For every part recovered, 
several fall and become even more difficult to extract. As for the remains of the deceased, the recovery attempt could result in the destruction and mutilation of those bodies, giving a rather dishonorable and horrifying end to those who fell in the attack. That is why the vast majority of the victims of the sunken ships remain submerged for months and even years. This not only further disintegrates organic remains, but also complicates the differentiation between the found parts. Without DNA technology, how could a mutilated and water-worn arm be identified? The relatives of the deceased aboard the USS Arizona demanded for years the removal of the remains from the seabed, but the US government refused repeatedly. According to naval statutes, those sailors are considered buried at sea. That's why there are monuments at the scene, and every year a ceremony is held in memory of the victims of each ship. What caused more uproar is that the government conducted operations to recover weapons, torpedoes, and useful structures from the depths of the Pacific waters, many of which proved to be completely unusable due to initial damage and saltwater wear. Eventually, progress was made in identifying bodies, which continued for several years. Even today, experts are still working to identify the remains of the victims of the surprise attack. Skulls, bones, and teeth recovered in the years following the war were considered unidentifiable. But thanks to scientific advances, especially in DNA technology, dozens of them stopped being simple anonymous pieces and managed to regain their first and last names, something that the Japanese offensive had taken away in a few seconds. Next, we can see a group of specialists working on the remains of the soldiers who fell that morning. In 2015, the Pentagon ordered the exhumation of the remains of 388 Americans who died aboard the USS Oklahoma, which was attacked with several torpedoes while the ship was still moored to the pier. This caused its structure to tilt on one side, trapping hundreds of sailors who died in the waters of the Pacific. The bodies of these 388 men were buried in mass graves, but had to be exhumed from the lands of Honolulu to be transferred to the closed facilities of the DPAA military agency, where forensic experts, anthropologists, and odontologists worked to identify the remains. In 2017, Deborah Zinni, a forensic anthropologist and head of the DPAA laboratory, reported that identifications of dead sailors are made almost daily, explaining some of the difficulties of the process. This is um, something that we originally started in 2003 with the first casket associated with the USS Oklahoma um, that we exhumed and did some DNA testing and even just some anthropological methods. We knew um, right then that the remains were highly commingled, meaning that there was more than one person represented, uh, but to the extent of commingling really wasn't um, realized until the DNA results came in and there were over 90 um, individuals represented in that one casket. However, despite the complexities and setbacks, scientists continue their work. One of the most incredible examples of those identified from the USS Oklahoma was fireman first class Jim Johnston, who died at the age of 23 and was originally from Wesson, Mississippi. His identification was possible thanks to the DNA of two nephews matched with dental remains nearly 80 years old. A single tooth was enough to restore his identity and thus be able to distinguish the bones that belonged to Johnston and those that belonged to another deceased and still anonymous soldier with whom he shared a grave. Finally, decades after his death, Jim Johnston managed to be buried properly. The ocean plays a very important role in the gruesome puzzle of human parts scattered after the attack. The United States began recovery efforts only in the summer of 1942. By that time, the remains of the sailors had turned into skeletons, sometimes mixing with each other, causing many to be buried incorrectly. In numerous cases, there are several anonymous soldiers in the same grave, with about 1,077 crew members dead. The USS Arizona ship was the most affected during the Pearl Harbor attack, 
and many of its victims remained without a proper burial for several decades with names and ranks. Only 107 soldiers could be identified immediately. The rest had to wait for decades. According to the U.S. Museum on World War II, a bomb pierced the Arizona's weapons compartment, causing a chain reaction of explosions. These spectacular and shocking images were taken at that precise moment. What you just saw is one of the few real-time video records of a battleship sinking. The images portray a real floating hell that ended the lives of 80% of its crew, as only 334 of the 1511 sailors on board managed to survive, many of them with serious injuries. In a few minutes, the more than 31 tons of the battleship went from being a weapon of war to scrap at the bottom of the Pacific. Beyond the tragic story of the fallen, there are truly incredible stories among the survivors of the USS Arizona. This is Lauren Bruner, one of the few survivors of the Japanese attack on the USS Arizona. In this photograph, he holds an image of when he was a young sailor, full of dreams and aspirations to see the world. Surely, he did not expect that, during his service, the entire planet would be plunged into one of the most brutal battles in history. Bruner remembered for years the burns and wounds he suffered on his body, but also the faces, names, and personalities of several of his deceased comrades, some of whom have not yet received a proper burial due to the difficulty of identifying their remains. Bruner's story is particularly incredible as after the attack on Pearl Harbor, he spent six months recovering in a military hospital, but once recovered, he returned to the front to face the Axis in the Pacific Theater. Bruner passed away in 2019 at the age of 98, and his family fulfilled the veteran's wishes to rest in the ocean waters alongside his fallen comrades from the USS Arizona. During the commemorative ceremonies for the 78th anniversary of the attack, a group of divers dressed in vintage equipment descended to the hull of the sunken ship to deposit an urn with the ashes of the retired military man. Lauren Bruner now accompanies the thousands of young men who never grew old, those who remained frozen forever on December 7, 1941. This is the monument dedicated to the USS Arizona, which thousands of people visit every year, becoming a symbol of Pearl Harbor. Another severely affected ship was the USS West Virginia. In October 2016, the US government authorized the exhumation of 34 graves associated with the crew in an attempt to identify the remains. However, perhaps the most shocking case is that of the 429 victims of the USS Oklahoma. The ship was hit by 10 torpedoes within 10 minutes. The destruction was total and the carnage inside the ship prevented the proper categorization of the remains. In many cases, a single coffin was the final resting place for parts of several soldiers mutilated by the chaos of the attack. For the families and survivors of the USS Oklahoma, there was no opportunity to heal the wounds as it was almost impossible to recover bodies properly. Today, the only place where families can go to pay tribute to their fallen is at this monument located in Pearl Harbor, much less popular and visited than the USS Arizona Monument. There is also a plaque for seven soldiers whose identity remains a mystery. The attack on Pearl Harbor was a turning point during the World War II and was the catalyst for Washington's entry into the conflict. But not only that, it provoked a fierce hatred from American soldiers towards the Japanese, leading to a brutal revenge carried out for years in the Pacific Theater. During the Pacific Campaign, some soldiers of the U.S. Army went so far as to mutilate the dead bodies of Japanese troops. This macabre activity included taking souvenirs or war trophies, which could be teeth or skulls of Japanese warriors. In this photograph, soldiers rest alongside a gruesome companion. It may sound primitive and archaic, but the taking of trophies was so common 
that it was discussed and referenced in numerous magazines and newspapers. It is said that President Franklin Roosevelt himself received as a gift a letter opener made from the arm of a dead Japanese soldier. According to the story, Roosevelt was horrified by the macabre gift and ordered a military burial for the human letter opener. The news of this activity also reached the Japanese public. On the Eastern Island, Americans were portrayed as primitive, racist, and inhuman, as cold-blooded hunters who sought to annihilate all Asians. In addition, the Japanese press published a cover of Life magazine in which a young woman was seen with a trophy skull. The girl looks at the skull with a strange expression. Her eyes are horrified, but her mouth tries to draw a smile. This image became a symbol of American barbarism and caused a lot of uproar among Japanese society. This behavior was officially prohibited by the U.S. Army, which in 1942 published a series of rules and guidelines for behavior toward the enemy. Despite these recommendations, this vengeful action was rarely officially punished by the military court, and cases of mutilation and taking of human parts as trophies continued to be reported throughout the Pacific conflict. There were even reports of brutal occasions when teeth were extracted from Japanese soldiers who were still alive. Several years after the war ended, trophy skulls were still being discovered in the hands of veterans of the conflict. Both from the American and Japanese sides, considerable efforts have been made to repatriate these mutilated body parts to their homeland. The recovery of the dead in foreign lands is a long and difficult task. The efforts of the DPAA at Pearl Harbor are just one part of the costly commitment of the U.S. Army to try to find and identify missing soldiers in combat during the conflicts of the entire 20th century. The Department of Defense sends dozens of forensic medicine experts every year to isolated locations in the Pacific in search of missing crew members. It may sound like looking for a needle in a haystack, but that method has been effective. In 2015, for example, the remains of three aviators whose plane crashed in Malaysia just before the end of World War II were found. The parts of the fallen soldiers had to wait more than 70 years to be discovered, examined, and repatriated to finally rest in a military cemetery. However, that was not the only case of unidentified troops in Asian territory. During the campaign in Guadalcanal, an island located in the southwest of the Pacific, some of the most brutal battles took place in the jungles and plantations of the region. The heat and vegetation resulted in almost immediate decomposition of human remains, and when combined with the violence of the clashes, resulted in almost impossible identification, at least immediately. The hospital in Guadalcanal witnessed grotesque images of mutilated bodies, of body parts on the brink of putrefaction. Thanks to fingerprint and dental analyses like this, it was possible to carry out a massive inspection of the deceased. Even with all the difficulties, the unpleasant task of identifying the remains of soldiers is an obligation to those who gave their lives for their nation. Of course, not all could or can be identified. The case of a particular body became iconic. These are the files of X-8. From his story, we only have these bone representations and images of his dental plates, but the information is insufficient to establish the true identity of this person. Perhaps one day, researchers can put a face to this hospital code. War is brutal and messy. It does not always allow the corresponding rituals to be carried out, and many of the fallen never received a proper burial. The case of the bodies at Pearl Harbor is one of the most striking because, for decades, hundreds of deceased sailors lay in the waters of Honolulu, waiting to reclaim their story. There is still much work to be done on all fronts of World War II, and to this day, remains of anonymous soldiers are still being discovered in all theaters of the conflict. The goal of historians and specialists is to give a name and surname to each of them. So, we reach the end of this video, but before saying goodbye, we would like to invite you to subscribe and activate notifications to stay informed about all our updates. We look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Military History.